Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marisa. So in today's video, I am giving a full beginner tutorial on resin art and how to make beautiful resin coasters. So this is going to be a longer video today. Okay, this is specifically for beginners or anyone who would love to learn. Love. So it would, you would love to learn how to make these beautiful coasters. Please watch this video, stay tuned, and let's get started. All right, guys, so let's get started with this tutorial. Now, before we get into everything that's on the table, one of the most important things is to prepare your space. So the first thing to prepare the space you're going to be working in is make sure your room is well ventilated. Now, a lot of these resins right here, they have either low odor, uh, no vac, mean no fumes, but some people are definitely more uh, susceptible and um, you know sensitive. Me personally, I don't use a mask, but if you need to use a mask, please by all means do so. Um, but yes, the first thing is make sure your area is well ventilated. Also, um, you know, I'm an artist, so I do have clothes that are messy and I paint in and all that. So please wear clothes that you do not care about because you will get stuff on it. If you're using glitter, the resin, you may touch your clothes accidentally. Um, we definitely have to wear gloves, but like, you know, you may touch your clothes and ruin your favorite pair of pants or your shirt. So definitely wear something if you have an apron. But I was just to suggest that you just wear something that you could care less about, that you work in, that would be great. Okay, and I'm sorry if you hear a little noise in the background. That's my air conditioner because otherwise it would be burning hot in here, okay? All right, so first is ventilate, all right, in preparing your space. The second is we are going to cover and protect our area that we are going to work on, all right? So here are some silicone mats. Now this is like a craft table, my art table, but I still don't want resin all over it because it's almost impossible to get off. I don't even know how to get resin off, okay? So these are some silicone mats, the big one, and I layer them. The big one was like $15 on Amazon, and these two together were like seven or eight dollars on Amazon. So very, very affordable. So cover your area. All right. Now the third thing in preparing your area to do resin is make sure your table is balanced. Okay, this is called a balance if you don't know. And the way that you um, know your table is balanced, your surface is balanced, is that if this little uh, air bubble here is in the center. Otherwise, it'll be going that way or that way. So my table is balanced. Okay, I do have a more professional one. I have no idea where it is. But this is perfect. Okay, so make sure that your area is balanced because otherwise when you pour the resin, it may tip this way, it may tip that way. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to level out. Now, a lot of these resins are self-leveling, but still, if your table is not balanced and level, it's not going to be. It is absolutely not going to be. Okay. Now, the third tip I have, and I really thought about this because for so long I wasn't doing this, make sure, because this is just like easier for you, make sure you take out all of the stuff you're going to use prior. Because I have done this where I'm like, oh, I want to use this, I want to use that after I've mixed my resin and my hands are sticky. And then I start touching everything. Um, if you could see, there's a lot of little you know, like old stains on here and whatnot. So what I would, I need you to do is prepare, you know, think about what you want to use. Now I have a lot of materials for resin. So if you're just starting, you may have very few, um, 
but think about what you want to create ahead of time and take out all your supplies ahead of time that way your hands aren't sticky and you kind of have an idea of what you want to do like take out your mold this is the mold we're going to be using okay this is from a company called dryer days one of the best and most interesting uh, looking molds it was actually out of uh, stock for a while and when, as soon as it got back in stock I immediately grabbed it a great company and they sell all different types of stuff uh, as well I think they do sell some resin uh, they sell you know a whole bunch of stuff here I'm gonna get into that in a minute but these are the finished product of what I made with them. Look how gorgeous this is. Okay, that's that one. That is that one with the cool little uh, shells in it. We got this gorgeous one. I just thought they were so unique. And each one of the molds inside here, there's a four piece coaster mold, is different. That's what I loved about it. It's very unique. Today, we're only going to use one of them. All right, so I'm going to choose one just to keep it nice and simple. We're just going to do one today, okay? So, yeah, take out, think ahead of like what colors you want to use. If you want to use glitters, uh, I'm, I have some uh, silver glass chips here. I got some neon glass chip. That's what I want to use. I'm going to use some of this fairy, chunky fairy cake uh, glitter and these really, really cool pink glitter flakes and I got these from um, dryer days and most of this stuff is from primal flow okay and yeah this is gorgeous all right now after you take out everything meaning your rise I'm gonna get into that in a minute okay is make sure again wear something you don't care about and one of the most important things is gloves you want to protect your hands resin is very very hard to get out of anything silicone mats are great because you can just literally pick it off but then table clothes your hands it's gonna be a whole different story okay so that is preparing your area I will be back for part two okay so part two is measuring and mixing okay so you now you have a couple different types. you have plenty of different types of uh, resin kits some of them are a two to one so this is called clearcast 750 this is an amazing um, resin I am running out and I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough for this mold I have to buy more because I love this one and they also have the clear cast 7000 um, so it's like two parts resin one part hardener always usually that and then in my other video I use the liquid diamonds always another great resin it's a two to one all right so resin two parts hardener one part all right I'm gonna get those out of the way now we're also kind of going to do a little review of this because i've never used this one before this is called t t expert i guess that's how you pronounce it um so this is a one-to-one -one. Um, i ran out of resin pretty much i have very little and i just want to make sure i had enough so i tried this one i think i got this off of amazon yes i did it was like 20 bucks um and usually when i try new resin i usually get like kind of the smaller version um until i know i really like it you know uh, this one i kind of jumped in on because i i had a lot of great reviews and i saw what um people made with it so i kind of just went for it but usually i recommend especially if you're doing this for the first time to get a small version of whatever type of resin you want to uh, try okay now measuring so it's one to one meaning if you do one ounce it's one ounce of this one ounce of that five ounces five ounces of this five ounces of the resin and five ounces of the hardener it actually came with these cute little cups um it was a little too small for me um, these are filthy, so excuse me, uh, but I actually wrote on it resin and hardener. These are silicone cups that you can get. I think it came in a kit, um, but yeah, I labeled them, so I made sure, like, if I had mixed 
uh, more, I wouldn't kind of combine the two because once you combine the two, it starts curing. Okay. And there's like a, you know, chemical reaction. Um, and that's another thing with time. Most of these resins have a time limit before it really starts curing. And, uh, I believe this one came with directions. Um, and that's another tip. Always look at directions. If the, if it does come with the directions, it's basic, like one to one ratio to two to one ratio. Most of them will tell you how much time you have to work with it. I believe this one said about 45 minutes. Okay. So meaning when I mix these two, you have 45 minutes to do whatever you want with it, create whatever type of art until the process starts to cure. Okay. And then usually it's like a 24 hour cure time, but we're going to get into that later. So now it's mixing and measuring and mixing. All right. And you can use these little cups too. They're really kind of cool. They have a little, uh, what is it called? A little pour there to pour easily. I like to use these because I could just chuck them afterwards. Um, it's just easier for me. And you know, if you're a beginner, you want it as easy as possible. Okay. So I believe that mold takes about five ounces. Um, but you know what? I always like to pour a little extra just in case because I rather have more than less. And as I'm doing this, I just want to let you know, don't worry about making mistakes. If you, let's say, don't have enough resin poured, it's okay. Mix more. If you don't, if you have too much, it's okay. Either you don't want to really waste it. It's kind of expensive. Um, you can use another mold. I always have like smaller molds on hand. So like if I pour too much, um, I could just, you know, not waste the resin. Okay. So that's a, uh, a, a tip that don't worry so much about making mistakes. So basically you want, so far this resin doesn't look bad. I have to say you want the same amount in each. Okay. So now some people, they actually have like a little mini scale and they measure it that way. All right. I am not a perfectionist. I don't roll like that. I kind of just kind of do it by eye. Um, and that's why I like using these clear um, cups here. Okay. And I do it by eye. And you know what? If you're off by just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, it is not going to necessarily ruin everything. But if it's like, in all the way to the top of this one and not enough of that one, it, it will make a difference. Okay. So we're going to test these out. I'm going to look at them really quick and I need a little more. I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to, because I can't really hold it the way I want to look at it. Otherwise it's going to spill out. Yep. That's about right. So I do it by eye. Some people, like I said, use a scale. They measure it that way, you know, by weight. I don't do that. I just go by eye. Um, again, these here have like little lines. You can look at like how many ounces and stuff like that. If you know how much the cup is, let's say like this is like a three ounce cup. You know, if you fill it to the top, it's three ounces. It's not that uh, hard, you know. Also, very, very important. I almost forgot this. Okay. Keep your resin in a warm spot because if this resin gets cold and so it's hardening, there will definitely be microscopic air bubbles in your resin and hardener. Okay. When you mix it together, you will never be able to get out ever. It, I don't care how much you torch it, how much you heat it up, how many bubbles you pop, they will never come out. So what I do is the warmest room in my house, is the kitchen and a really good temperature is between about 75 degrees, 70, 75 degrees, anything below that you're kind of pushing it. So find a really good, nice, warm spot in the house. And I always keep mine in the kitchen during the winter and all that. All right. So, and by the way, if 
I know this is a lot of information and this video is a little longer than most of mine, but there's a lot of information. Please feel free to pause the video, rewind, go back and uh, watch it again. That would be, I don't have a problem you doing that because um, this is a lot of information. I'm trying to make it as quick as possible, but it, you know, this is for beginners. So this is the hardener. All right. So don't mess that up. That's the hardener. That's the resin. So what you're going to do is pour the hardener in first. Okay. And I make sure I try to get it all out. And what I like to use, they have these silicone spoons you could, you could use as well. I like using this guy right here because it has a great um, way to scrape the sides. All right, so we are going to get most of it in as much as we can because resin is on the expensive side. So especially the higher quality ones, you don't want to waste any. All right, so that's good enough. And then just remember, if you want to mix more, just kind of do this. Keep it together so you don't um, forget wh which one is which. All right, so this is the hardener. Now for the resin. Now just remember, once you do this and you mix the two, you are now on a time limit. All right, and that's why I also say take out everything you need ahead of time even if you like let's say forget something it's not like you gotta look for stuff and then waste time and that way you kind of take more time to create and be more creative if you start stumbling around for stuff and then your hands are all sticky because look see my hands are already sticky you're gonna be touching stuff so you want to kind of get certain things prepared already all right, now, very, very important. You are going to stir this. Now, this is actually not bad. Once you start stirring it, you are gonna know, see that it is cloudy at first, which is normal. And what you're gonna do is, you're gonna stir very slowly, okay? And then you're gonna scrape the sides and the bottom slowly you don't want to create more air bubbles so just slowly scrape the bottom scrapes the sides and then keep on stirring for three to five minutes straight until the resin is as clear as possible okay it is very normal for it to be cloudy at first and then it will become clear in three to five minutes all right so this is a very important Stir, scrape the bottom, and scrape the sides. I keep on doing that for three to five minutes. Now I'm going to go off and I'm going to uh, finish mixing this and then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, so this is mixed now. I mix it for about three to five minutes. It is pretty clear. I'm pretty happy with this resin so far. No joke, I am happy with it. So now the next step is adding your color and embellishments, all right? So what I did was I took a little bit of this uh, black uh, pigment. I just put it on a little craft stick, put it in the cup. And I'm using some silver and then we're going to take the next color which is this uh, neon pink all right so for primal flow says to put the pigment in first maybe some other companies that's why you should like just look at um, individual directions because usually I would put my resin in mixture in the cup and just about this much is good and if you put a little too much in it's fine if you don't put enough don't worry about it. You can always add more. If you want it more pigmented, you can always add more pigment. If you want it a little less pigmented, you can always add more resin mixture and then uh, mix it. Okay. So that is, you know, don't feel like intimidated about that, about making mistakes. Look, I just spilled everything. Okay. Things happen. <laughs> All right. So here we go. All right, so now we're going to take, see, look at that. I spilled some in there. It's, things happen. I'm not a perfectionist. So we're going to 
pour some in there. We're going to pour some in there. Let's get that over here. Okay. And we're going to pour some. I kind of do it like I balance it out between like three or four colors. Usually I pick between three and four colors. Um, I don't try and overdo it unless I want to go crazy. And there. And there. And for me personally, I like to leave just a little bit in the cup, like just in case if I want to add, um, if it's like too pigmented. Um, I, you know, I leave a little bit left in the cup. And then here we go. Now this is mixing. So your pigment is on the bottom and you're just gonna stir like you did with the resin. I stir and I scrape the bottom very slowly. And this doesn't take like three to five minutes. It's just like eh, 30 seconds to a minute until you see all the pigments kind of dissolve into the resin mixture. Let's see, nice, beautiful uh, black resin there. So that's about good. Okay, nice and slowly though. You don't want to create bubbles that, um, you know, you don't want to add extra bubbles to anything. And they pop. Okay, let's do this one. Yeah, so also after we do this part, I'm going to show you a couple of ways if you want to use glitter and embellishments to, you could add glitters to the actual resin or you could, and I'm going to do both, you could add it directly to your molds. Like I said, we're only going to choose one of the molds today so it doesn't just get too complicated. There's a lot of stuff on the table. And like I said, please feel free to pause and go back um, to the beginning and rewatch it because it's a lot of information. Um, there's a lot of like little things like, you know, the temperature and all that of your room and your res is a lot. All right, so this is good. And like I said, don't feel Intim I was a little intimidated when I first started this, um, but I also am not the type to be like a perfectionist, so it's okay to make mistakes. Um, and I watched a lot of different uh, tutorials. That's how I learned. I literally learned by watching other YouTubers uh, do this. So it is perfectly okay. And I'm just gonna actually, I may add a little bit more because this is not as pigmented as I would like. And that's not making a mistake. That's just, you know, learning and actually making creative decisions. It's not really making mistakes. A lot of this is creative decisions. So, okay, what fell? Ah. Okay, and just keep on mixing until all the pigment has dissolved. Alrighty. Okay, I am going to go continue to mix this, taking a little longer. I'm going to be right back and we'll get to get on to adding some embellishments. Okay, I am back. So, one way you can, I guess I'm going to do both because I, like, I like doing both. I'm adding some of this uh, chunky fairy cake glitter here. You can add it directly to your resin. So, I'm just going to take a little or a lot. <laughs> okay. And then you're just going to mix that in again. All right. It's very pretty uh, glitter to this beautiful uh, black pigment. Okay. Now, what I also like to do is this really cool chunky glitter. 
is I'm going to add some directly to the uh, mold. And I usually have one um, paintbrush that I always use for it so I don't mess up a whole bunch of other paintbrushes that I have. And I kind of just tap it into the mold like that. And I'm actually just gonna go a little crazy here. Okay, I really like this uh, glitter. All right, that's good, because I'm gonna add some other stuff too. And it kind of gets stuck to it, so that's kind of cool. All right, and make sure you just seal it afterwards, because you don't want, if you want to use glitters, you don't want them all over the place. All right, let's get that out of the way. So I am going to just kind of tap it in a little bit right there. Okay. I am also going to use these neon pink glass chips. Let's see, where do I want these? I think I'm going to have these on the bottom. And this is, you know, getting creative, okay? So, and like I said, the best thing to do is kind of basically plan your colors and what you want to use beforehand. You could choose, choose to do whatever you want with it once it's up here, but it's just easier um, that everything is on the table, right? That way you don't have to search for stuff, okay? There we go. And then I'm going to use some of this uh, very cool silver glass chips with the pink oh that's gonna look really cool nice then i'm going to take this the other end to this thing that's why i love this tool and i am going to like kind of shove it in these little sections here because i want a very specific spot again go crazy do what you want to do that part, I would never tell you what to do. I'm basically giving you the basics of mixing your resin as far as your creative choices. I would never tell anyone what to do. You use any color you want, any glitter, any embellishments you want. That is totally your choice. This is my choice today, okay? All right. Now, so that is that. So we have now added glitter to the resin. We also add some glitter here and added our embellishments, okay? Up next is pouring the resin mixture in our mold. Okay, part four is now pouring in in the mold, all right? Again, you choose which color you wanna go wear I am going to do the black. Hmm, I'm going to do it down here. All right, you just pour that in. All right. I'm gonna do some silver. Okay. And then I'm gonna do some of the pink. Okay. Very cool. And you want to fill it up to the edge, um, the top of the mold, so it's like a nice. It's very nice and full. And um, I, one thing I did forget to say: you should have some paper towels on hand um, because if you kind of get it on the edge, you could just wipe it off. So, and also for like any spills or anything. And again, I'm going to take the tip of this, and I'm just going to kind of make sure that it's in all these grooves. 
and there's so many different molds you can find. Um, I have this love word uh, um, uh, mold that I just love. <laughs> I love love. Um, yeah, so now, okay, what you can do, and I like to do too, is to make some textures and patterns in the uh, resin and you kind of mix them together and just get you know get creative with it don't feel like you're stifled I understand like if you're doing it for the first time you may feel like a little intimidated doing any of this like you don't want to like think you're gonna mess it up but don't feel that way you know, your choices aren't wrong, whatever you do, okay? Art is art, and whatever you choose to do is not wrong. I want to just give you the basics of kind of like chemical reactions and timing and stuff like that. Um, just basics. Now, as far as the creative part, go crazy. Do rainbow colors, do whatever you want. I just like to do different stuff and I just like to be crazy with it and creative and yeah so I kind of like that let's see add a little more because I don't want to go over too much just add a little more silver there we go I like that and make sure you don't puncture, if you're using this, just make sure you don't puncture your uh, mold. Okay, yeah, so that's, so that's the getting creative part, okay? Again, use any color you want, whatever you wanna do, but I'm just giving you the basics here, all right? So, the next uh, step is coming up right now. Okay, so the next step is popping any bubbles. Now, please be careful with your torch. You don't want to hit your mold itself, okay? So you're just going to pop any bubbles. Um, you're going to come to the surface. Any air bubbles usually pop to the surface, okay? You could also just pop them. Whoops. With this guy. So if you see any bubbles, you just pop, pop, pop. So that should be enough. Now, s depending on the resin, again, look at your instructions to your um, the resin that you choose. But a lot of resins, they they're touchable, meaning you can like take them out of the mold, or you can like kind of around eight hours. Like, let's say you want to make jewelry, it's still pliable, uh, but it's not like so tacky and sticky anymore. It, Everyone has different, um, <clears throat> excuse me, timings between six to eight hours. Let's say I was making jewelry. It's like pliable where I can stick like um, a little hook or a pin in there. So let's say make earrings. Now this, I'm going to leave alone. Um, this usually cures fully within 24 hours. Well, 24 hours, you can actually like pop it out. And it fully, fully cures, meaning there's like no more chemical reactions between three and five days. But after 24 hours, you can pop this out. No problem. And do not forget, and I always forget, believe it or not, but I do forget, to cover it. So you get a nice box, or it could be like a plastic container, and you just cover it and just leave it alone. Just leave it alone for 24 hours. When your first time, you're not gonna make jewelry and all that kind of stuff. You just wanna like maybe make a coaster or something like that. So you know what? Cover it up with a nice, um, something obviously to cover the whole, uh, the whole mold. And yeah, a, um, a cardboard box, a plastic, you know, container, whatever it is, just keep it leave it alone because you don't want dust maybe you have like bugs it's a summer you don't want anything like kind of falling in um your resin because then it will definitely get stuck in there okay so yeah 24 hours and then you can pop it out three to five days and it's like fully cured okay so i will be right back and we will wrap this up all right guys so let's wrap this up so, like I said, in 24 hours, you can unmold this, make sure you cover it, 
and then you will have a beautiful coaster just like these. I These are some of my favorite molds um, I have ever used. Very, very high quality. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now, a very quick review of this Tea Expert um, resin. I have to say, for the money, I have there is no smell, no fume. I don't smell anything. And I have allergies, so it would bother me. Um, I don't wear a mask, but um, I have to say, very little bubbles. Um, it mixed very, very well. And it uh, did mix in three to five minutes very clear. So I'm actually really, really happy with this resin. I found another one that was, you know, pretty inexpensive. And um, it worked pretty well. But when we, you know, unmold it in 24 hours, you know, maybe like in another video, I'll just give you a quick update about this one because this video is really long as it is, okay? And if you want to start... You know doing resin art for yourself i create another kit i have a paint pouring kit with kit.co okay for uh paint pouring if you want to start that and i also have one for uh resin art okay so i just started that one and it is pretty much finished so definitely go and check out the link in the description below it's an affiliate link just letting you know but it does have um, all the basic things you need to start paint uh, paint pouring to start your resin art Okay, it's a whole kit. You don't have to obviously get the whole kit You know, you can just get sections of it or whatever. They are just suggestions of what you can use if you are starting um, As far as like the plastic cups you can get them at the Dollar Tree as far as the craft sticks You can get those at the Dollar Tree as well. Okay, Dollar Tree doesn't have mold and resin but, you know, those types of things you could definitely get at the Dollar Tree, okay? So, wow, gorgeous, crystal clear. Look how beautiful that is. Just a little close-up of what we made together today. Okay, guys? So, thank you so, so much for watching today. If anyone has any other questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I am here... 24 7 anyone has any questions whatsoever i am here to answer your questions yeah so that's it just leave in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video you found it helpful please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of my videos all my links are below in the description and thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one bye hey guys i am back just for a minute i just wanted to share with you in this video how this beautiful coaster came out um, with the beautiful glitters from dryer days and this these gorgeous mica pigments from primal flow um, if you want to check out primal flow i highly recommend their pigments um, their link will be in the description below not an affiliate link just their link to their website with some other information uh, about them i really love these pigments i love how this came out i think this is gorgeous and i just want to share with you what we made um actually this is um three days ago now so this is fully cured it is absolutely beautiful and it goes along with my other set of coasters so guys i hope you enjoyed thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye